Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. You know, I was pondering the other day what... Oh, yeah. Uh, you might be wondering why I don't have a beer to stroke while I ponder. Well, that's because I made a very foolish bet the other day at Ask That Guy With The Glasses. I bet him that John McCain would win this recent presidential election, instead of that other guy, I forget his name. I think he was on the news once. So, since I lost that bet, I had to go ahead and shave my beard off. What can you do? Well, I hope you're happy, Mr. Glasses, sitting there all high and mighty in front of your bookcase. Hello? Oh, hello, hey. Didn't hear you come in. Wait a minute! Why did you shave your beard? I thought the contest was if McCain lost, I had to shave it off. No, I thought the contest was if I didn't post the video with the contestants answering the questions in a week, I'd had to shave my beard. P.S. It's coming soon. Well, this is great! We both shaved our beards off when neither of us had to. What the hell else could happen? Hello! Am I on the internet? Well, why the hell did you shave your beard off? You weren't even part of the contest! I just wanted to belong! I saw everyone else shaving their beards off, so I decided to, too! Will you guys be my friends now? No! God! How'd you shave that thing anyway? I didn't think you had a razor. I put cheese whiz all over my face, and then I let loose a bunch of hungry rats! They were so happy, I named them all Daryl. Oh, dude, don't tell me anymore. That's also how we wax my bikini area. Dude, stop! You were in the part of the contest! You didn't have to change! What? Change! Change! If you got change! Oh, ah, come geez. on, get him out of here, will ya? I'll give you a cheese wax! Piss off! Just to let you know, that video is coming, I assure you. Get out of here! Oh, right. <clears throat> this is that guy with the glasses saying, there's no such thing as a stupid... Great, so I shaved off my beard for nothing. What a waste. Well, even though I will no doubt grow another one, I can't help but feel saddened by the loss of my cherished friend. He's been on my lips for years, and now, with a whisk of a razor, he's gone. I am not usually a sentimental person, but I feel it only necessary to pay homage to the first and original beer that has been on my face for what seems like eons. So, you wonderful scraps of face fuzz, this is for you. I'd like to thank Sarah McLaughlin for writing the most overused montage song of all time. But I'd also like to thank Green Day for being the second runner-up with I Hope You Had the Time of Your Life. Sorry, Green Day, it's just McLaughlin's song was a little bit sadder. And this is a time for mourning. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. <laughs> That's right, I have a review to do. <clears throat> You know, I was pondering the other day why so many people got offended when I reviewed the movie Mortal Kombat. I of course pointed it out for the ridiculous piece of horror that it was, but I was surprised to find a lot of people enjoyed it. Why? I mean, okay, it's certainly not as bad as some other films I've reviewed on here, but why do so many people consider it a satisfying movie? Well, a lot of folks have emailed me saying that it's not really so bad once you compare it to the sequel that came out two years later, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I don't think I've ever gotten so many requests to do one movie. Practically every day someone was asking me to review this. Well, I gave in the peer pressure and have decided to look over this shit madness in all its glory. Even the cover gives the strange order to destroy all expectations. Well, judging by the first film, I can safely say that I have no expectations. So this shouldn't be that disappointing. You want to take a look? So do I. Let's jump right in. Oh, I'm sorry. I seem to have popped in the first movie. These are obviously the exact same credits. No, it says Annihilation on there. Maybe they just printed it on the wrong cartridge. Yeah, look at that. It's the first movie. It even says right there. Wait, what? Oh my god, they used the exact same opening! No difference at all! How cheap are these a-holes? 
Why did you even need to CG a new title? Were there no red crayons at the drugstore to cross it out and just write Annihilation over it? Wow, these guys are really going the extra mile! So it starts out with a mortal recap of the first film. Liu Kang won the championship, Raiden never shut up, Johnny Cage and Sonya got together, I guess. And they even got out with some evil emperor's daughter called Katana or something. I don't know, she was in the movie for like a minute. And they all live happily ever after. Or do they? It turns out that evil is approaching as it starts raining Cirque du Soleil on our heroes, who find themselves surrounded by some nasty henchmen. But our fearless fighters are confident as Liu Kang gets on his guard. Katana readies for battle. Sonya prepares for... Who the hell is that? That's not Sonya, that's like a totally different actress. Raiden, what the hell's going on here? Ah! You're not Raiden! Johnny Cage! Who are all these people? Ah! You're not Johnny Cage! So wait a minute. If you're not Sonya, you're not Raiden, and you're not Johnny Cage, then what does that make me? Actually, it turns out that they got all new actors for these characters, which is kind of strange because the first film indicates that there will definitely be a sequel. So don't you think they would have had the actors sign on for that? Frank, you're my agent. You gotta get me out of this movie sequel. I know I did the first one, but they don't even have enough money for a new opening sequence. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. Alright. I'll just have to fake my own death. <sighs> I can't go back. So we certainly see a bunch of lightning and cool-looking creatures, but just who are these sideshow rejects who are threatening our heroes? The Earth was created in six days, and on the seventh day, mankind will rest in peace! Oh god, Jehovah's Witnesses. No, it turns out that all these baddies are working for the evil Emperor of Darkness. What's his name? Shao Kahn. Kahn! Ah, yeah, Shao Kahn. The only evil overlord who dresses up like McGruff the crime dog. As long as the portal remains open, your world becomes my world. And take a bite out of crime. He's also accompanied by his queen, Sindel, who also happens to be Katana's... Mother. Mother? Did she give birth when she was two? So the Emperor fights Raiden as he makes fun of his George Washington haircut, as they show off their effects that are so lame that even the angry video game nerd could pull them off. But Cage wants in on these crappy Photoshop effects and enters himself into the battle. But that turns out to be a bad idea. Johnny Cage dies? This film's looking up already! How soon do the other characters get it? <laughs> so the rest of the heroes escape the Emperor by entering some sort of underground cave. Here, Raiden tries to explain exactly what's going on. I believe he has resurrected your mother to keep these portals open indefinitely. By reuniting you with her, he has a spell will be broken. Your mother's soul will be at peace. And his portal's closed. Isn't that cute? They think we give a crap. How could the Elder Gods allow this? I do not know. But Khan Khan! must be stopped or your world will perish. I beat Shang Tsung like I can beat Khan. Khan! You are no match for Khan. Khan! If anyone's going to kill Khan. Khan! All right, enough with the Khans! Khan! So the story is actually kind of hard to follow. I guess they have to split up and roam between the realms of the human world and outworld as the Emperor slowly merges the two worlds together. Their goal, I guess, is to just find a way to stop the Emperor and his evil queen. Sounds simple enough. So how are we gonna travel? By using the cage balls from American Gladiators, of course! Just watch these things move. And that's not my crappy editing or anything, that's really how they move. Look at these things. It's like taxis for gerbils. On top of that, two people have to ride on it, facing each other, thrusting forward, and heaving their bodies to make it go. This is like the most awkward amusement park ride in the world. When visiting Six Flags, be sure to ride the fuck ball. Hours of uncomfortable, unpractical, and all around unenjoyable fun. It's like the tunnel of love, only it's a fuck ball. Must be at least this perverted to ride. Meanwhile, we cut to the Temple of the Emperor, where we see him discuss the takeover of Earth with his father. The merger has begun. Earth is under attack. And it is glorious! I am acting! Did you make Raiden beg for his life before destroying him?
Thank you, that was very necessary. Raiden is of no concern to us. You let him live? I have no use for excuses. I've broken All the right, sacred rules. Get out of my personal space, floating. So Liu Kang and Katana are attacked by the only robot who wears dreads, as they continue through another action sequence where people are just jumping around on strings. It's like Crouching Tiger hidden bullshit. There's so many strings in this movie, I keep thinking there's a puppet master at the top of the screen. Pull the string! Pull the string! But then they're saved by a familiar face, Sub-Zero. Well, wait a minute, didn't he freeze to death in the first movie? You killed my older brother. Oh, that was his brother, 7 degrees Celsius. Okay, I get it now. You killed my older brother. So why did you help us? Because I hated him. He was a douche. We have a common enemy, Sub-Zero. You must help well, us. No, wait a minute. Back. She just called him Sub-Zero. Okay, okay. Maybe it was Scorpion, the yellow guy, who was the brother in the first film that died. Okay, now that makes sense. So, who are they going to encounter next? <laughs> what is going on? We saw both of these guys die in the first movie. Why are they suddenly back? Did they both have brothers? Are they themselves brothers? Are they clones? Are they the same people but different actors? All the other actors are different, so how am I supposed to tell? I follow lectures on black hole theories less complicated than this! Amidst all the fighting, Scorpion grabs Katana and takes her back to the Emperor. Suckers! Na 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 na! Meanwhile, we cut to Sonya, who looks like she's pretty busy breaking into Jurassic Park, trying to find more pointless fight scenes to partake in. She comes across her counterpart named Jax, who just had the best steroid injection he ever had in his life. All right, all right, stand back, stand back. Let's see what I'm made of. Whoa, it turns out I'm made of awesome. But a lost G.I. Joe action figure comes in to make their escape a little tougher. I come free with any happy meal. So ninjas come in as we partake in, gasp, another fight scene. Behold my accessories, they are all sold separately. Be careful of what you hit, one of those buttons might zap Timmy on the electric fence. My batteries are not included, motherfucker. Okay, seriously, how many jump scenes can you have in a friggin' movie? It's like they're fighting in a trampoline factory. Look at these ninjas, the foot soldiers were more threatening than them. A son chop! So Sonya finds some sort of flammable molten milk or something and blows it at the Tweety Bot, roasting him alive. This is not covered by my guarantee. Then they have to rush out of the building for the biggest, most incredible green screen explosion you've ever seen in your life. You know, guys, you don't have to blow up everything. Especially if you don't have, oh, I don't know, THE EXPLOSION! Meanwhile, Liu Kang roams the desert, searching for some form of life that can help him get Katana back. Instead, he comes across... an obvious wolf effect that they could not afford. That two seconds of mediocre special effects is known as Night Wolf, a Native American warrior who looks suspiciously like Spirit from G.I. Joe, and is just about as handy. But to beat Shao Kahn, you've got to pass three tests. First one's courage. I don't have time for these stupid games! Oh, well, that's not good. The second challenge was stupid games. <laughs> so Nightwolf tries to help him discover his inner beast by showing him past clips from the other movies. That would bring out anybody's raging inner beast. <laughs> Look, he's turning into the Hulk! You wouldn't like me when I'm Liu Kangry! What Liu Kang didn't know, apparently, is that when you find your inner beast, hot, half-naked women appear to offer themselves freely to you. With you, Liu Kang, I'm not afraid. I can clearly see that. No! My heart... belongs to another. Your heart belongs to another? Who? What, Katana? That chick you've known for less than an hour? How does she own your heart? True, you just met this other woman, but give her a few minutes and you will have known her just as long. Unfortunately, the young lady doesn't take rejection well, as she transforms into a fearsome ninja and starts whooping Liu Kang's ass. Uh, is it okay if we go back to having sex? So it turns out the young woman's name is Jade, and she was just testing Liu Kang. Yeah, that's it. To see if he would give in to temptation. He doesn't, so I guess she's joining him on his quest. I don't know, makes about as much sense as anything else. Meanwhile, we see Sonya and Jax as they too roam through the desert. There they come across, here's a big surprise, someone else to fight! Katana? You wish. Oh, glad to meet you, you wish! I seriously cannot believe how many fight scenes there are in this movie. I mean, look at this! It's just two women fighting each other, covered in mud! 
heaving their large breasted bodies onto each other, touching one another, rolling around, grabbing each other's hair, getting all dirty and messy mud all over their bodies, forcing their clothes to cling to their skin ever so tightly, revealing their slim, revealing their slim feminine figures for all of us to see, biting and clawing at each other, giving into their animal instincts, clawing one another like cats, and hissing and screaming until one of them comes out victorious. Oh, oh yes! Oh, yes! Oh, oh, yes! 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 Oh, Yes, you're a dirty little kitty, aren't you? Just a dirty, dirty little kitty. Yes, you are, you're di- Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so after that scene, Sonya defeats you, Wish, and is suddenly attacked by, um, Bowser's anorexic sister but is saved by Jax, who puts that computer-generated sock puppet in his place. Meanwhile, we see Raiden talking to the gods as he tries to figure out how the Emperor went against the rules of Outworld and Mortal Kombat. Ah! A scene without fighting! Take it away! Take it away! Raiden then rejuvenates himself, trying to pull off the Billy Idol look, as he meets up with the rest of our heroes. We find out that our heroes have to travel to Outworld to rescue Katana, and I guess remove the spell from her mother that makes her all vampirish. Faster than you can say, STOP FUCKING FIGHTING! Another fight scene pops up, as we see Raiden split from the team to take on some more ninjas. So are you guys gonna hit each other, or...? Could you maybe stop doing flips and actually attack one another? Will somebody just throw a punch?! For crying out loud, this isn't Mortal Kombat! It's Mortal Ballet! Well, I had enough of this fight. Let's see how the other guys are doing fighting the vampire chick. Uh, hey! What, you fought her off screen? Are you telling me that I missed another possible girl on girl action scene? What a ripoff! <sighs> but they're fighting in Jello too. So Liu Kang breaks into the fortress to rescue Katana. I guess it looks like smooth sailing from here. It's a trap, Lou. Oh! Thanks! Were you gonna tell me that before or after he cut my head off? So Liu Kang fights the worst Spencer's cop Jimmy ever saw and gets Katana out of her cage. Here, Katana tries to use her magic to break her mother from the Emperor's spell. But her magic doesn't work, as the Queen escapes their grasp by doing her Wonder Woman twirl. Wonder Woman! Wonder Woman! So, what now? If Sindel is not the key to closing Khan's portals, then Khan has a higher allegiance. Wait a second. That tattoo, I've seen it before. It is a permanent mark that allows safe passage through the portals for the bearer and his passengers. You know, I think I just figured out one of the major problems with this movie. There's no story. There's just explaining. How do we stop Khan? Let me explain. Where do we go next? Let me explain. It's just explaining and fighting, and I get enough of that from my own government. So please, explain to us why you have that tattoo. My father is an elder god. If your father's an elder god, what does that make Khan? Shao Kahn is my brother. No! No! Alright, enough of these cliches. Let's just jump to the final fight scene where our heroes face off against Khan and his warriors. But wait a minute, why isn't Raiden coming? Oh, I know. Perhaps he has some sort of foolproof backup plan to sneak in and stop the Emperor taking him by surprise. So, tell us, Raiden, God of Lightning, what's your strategy to help our team? I will pray for you all. Fuck you! Get your ass in there, Thor! I mean, what, is he literally standing somewhere in the back shouting, Don't worry, I'll bravely watch you die from the sidelines. After he does some serious soul-searching, Raiden does finally come to his senses and fight his brother. Finally, a groundbreaking epic duel. God versus God, brother versus brother. An incredible battle that will no doubt be the highlight of- <laughs> Why were you even in this movie?! Game over, Suckality. Alright, so our heroes have to deliver the big fight as they use their martial arts skill to their full potential. Best death 
ever. It's up to Liu Kang to stop the evil emperor now, but in what way should it be decided? Will be decided as it should be. Immortal combat. Hell yeah! Kang gives into his inner beast and becomes... whatever the hell this is. But so does Khan, who magically transforms himself into a giant... Okay, how can we take this seriously? How would the duck have better effects than this? So Liu Kang of course defeats Khan, his father turns into a Rubik's Cube, they get Katana's mother back, restore order to the world, and they live happily ever after. Or do they? Yeah, yeah, they, they do pretty much. But I don't! I mean, this movie makes the first Mortal Kombat look like a masterpiece! I mean, nothing in this movie makes any sense or has anything resembling positive entertainment. So does that make the first Mortal Kombat a good movie? No, but it definitely makes it a movie. Which is more than I can say for this pig shit! If you have a chance to pass it up, do so, and never look back as long as you live. Oh, uh, I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember it? So you don't have to.